Welcome back away from uh, Walter Onoge's uh, suspension, at least for today, because the matter is still, uh, is still at the front burner. We want to talk about environment, we want to talk about health, we want to talk about safety, especially at workplace. And to quickly tell us one or two things about it, we have Johnny Banks, he's the board member and executive advisor of, health, of environment, health and safety. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, basically, uh, I think it's something that, uh, let me not preempt your, 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 your response, but a lot of people have said that uh, how much do we take cognizance of these three things at our workplace? What's your observation? Well, our observations are that there are ways to prevent injury uh, and, and damage on work sites if there is a sound approach to doing the work. Uh, the workers, too many workers are killed on the job. Uh, as a precursor to this to effort that we're undertaking, there were incidents in Bhopal, India, for instance, where literally hundreds of thousands of folks were affected and killed by the release of toxic material. Uh, our approach is to address things proactively before things happen, to submit uh, surveys to companies to evaluate their performance, the potential for hazards, to cite those to provide feedback to the company so that they can prevent this from happening. Uh, and workers can go to work with ten fingers, ten toes, and come home that same way. Wow. Now, is this peculiar? Is there? A, is this peculiar to Nigeria or to a part of the world, or is it? Does it cut across all countries? No, it cut, it cuts across all countries. Any country that that's industrialized that has uh, processes where um, human beings and toxic materials and equipment and dangerous uh, hazards exist, that potential is there. Uh, countries that. Um, practice sound uh, principles of uh, environmental health and safety guidelines, uh, they tend to operate you know, just fine um, and stay under the radar. But you have some instances where there's a horrific incident, as in the United States with the West uh, Fertilizer incident, there was a, a horrific explosion of ammonium nitrate where 15 people were killed. Uh, 12 of those were firefighters that responded. So, Generally, it, it involves a lack of awareness of the hazards before the incident occurs. What should actually be the measures now? Some companies may be listening to these who probably do not even know, let alone implement some of these policies where you don't even have the extinguisher around you, uh, the exit door is not provided for, you're just caged in a particular place. What are the basic requirements that these companies sh should watch out for when it comes to, you know, the necessary emergency measures that you should take? Okay. At a very basic level, employees should know where the emergency exits are. There should be training, there should be exercises, there should be uh, procedural updates so that when there's a change in the process, employees know that that change has occurred. Sometimes those changes will um, change the chemistry of a process and in so doing, create a hazard that wasn't there prior to that change. And so uh, the uh, enlightened approach to environmental health and safety is to address those issues when they occur, uh, to consider if there's been changes, if so, what needs to be uh, addressed to prevent uh, a hazard entering into the workplace that wasn't there. All right, my experience is that in a lot of cases where an incident occurs, folks, em employees have worked there for years and years and years with nothing happening. And all of a sudden there's an event that happens and, and more times than not there's been a change that wasn't really managed properly. Now, I don't know how long you've been in Nigeria. I would like to know your observations if you've visited various workspaces. I've been in Nigeria uh, for a little over a week now. This mm -hmm. is my first time here okay. uh, from the United States. And I've, I've enjoyed myself immensely and thank everybody for the hospitality. Uh, we have had occasion to uh, visit uh, several industrial sites. Uh, my, my observations initially are that there are some areas that are in need of improvement, um, that there are things that and that's not something that's peculiar to Nigeria. Uh, I've seen those same type of conditions in the United States in industrial you know, complexes. Uh, the, uh, what I would hope would be that if the feedback is provided to companies that there are these hazards, these conditions existing, that they would take an approach to address them promptly and move them out of the way so that folks can go to work and prevent let those me, type let of occurrences. Me, let me have you a bit, to give you a bit of feedback. I, I've seen some situations not a few situations, not in all cases, where you see, s they call them uh, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, labor, mm -hmm. where you see them being put inside some vehicles, mm -hmm. and they are just being packed as uh, um, 
they are not being treated as human, so to say. Um, we find out that most of these companies are owned by foreigners, mm -hmm. uh, especially from the Asian part of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question is, uh, what should, especially the labor, the umbrella body that should protect those people, mm -hmm. what should they do in demanding for these people to be treated well? Or should it be the government that should uh, you know, present the necessary regulatory framework for these companies to treat them as humans, not park them in a vehicle? I think there's a shared responsibility, uh, both employer, government, uh, for the employees to be empowered to uh, uh, voice their concerns about being transported in, in means that aren't uh, suitable for humans being, human beings to be transported. Uh, there are ways to convey humans from one point to another without coupling them with, with animals. Uh, uh, in the United States, there are guidelines in terms of people being transported. They can't uh, reside in the back of a vehicle in most states. Uh, they have to be secured by some type of seat belt or restraint system. And that's, syst that's a systematic approach to make sure that folks are safe if there is an incident. If you have people housed in a, a container uh, with, with animals and there is a mishap, they're very likely going to be hurt. And after the fact, it's easy to point out what should have been done. And so. Our approach is to look at those things before they happen and, and just ask the question, is that the best way to move human beings? There, there has to be a better way. Now in workspaces, let's talk about the workspace, environment, health and safety. What are the basic things that we should have in a workspace to ensure that every worker in that environment is uh, safe, mm -hmm. would, uh, has a, the environment is friendly enough without mm -hmm. them having accidents here and there? Mm -hmm. So what are the basic necessities in every workspace? The, the ambient conditions should be comfortable. Uh, it shouldn't be oppressively hot or cold. Uh, there should be a free flow of air circulating so that folks can breathe. There should not be any contaminants in that area uh, that are causing folks discomfort. Uh, at the end of the day, they should not uh, suffer from their efforts of repetitive stress injuries where uh, they may have pains and aches from doing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, human beings have limits. And, and enlightened organizations will uh, hire ergonomic specialists to examine the, the workstations to make sure that folks aren't putting themselves at risk because once the uh, condition gets beyond a certain point, it becomes debilitating and that worker can't go back to work. So it becomes a cost issue for the employer. They have to pay workers comp, that worker can't provide for his family anymore. So it's, it's a multi-layered uh, issue that if all the parties are involved in, in welcoming uh, the, the dialogue on what the conditions are in the work, where the hazards are, um, and make those, uh, address those in a sound way, uh, you have a workforce that's satisfied for being there, you have an employer that has employees that are productive and healthy, and they're not incurring you know, increased costs for having to hire another person to take this person's place the loss of that person's skill set that leaves when they don't return to work. Okay, before you go, let me just ask this last question. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, the president signed the disability law that would allow people living with disability some level of uh, uh, humane treatment being given to them. If you were to speak to these companies who will make their buildings disability friendly, what, what few things would you love to tell them? Um, in terms of their safety now? Well, I, I think it, it's prudent for companies to make buildings, environments as, as uh, people-friendly as possible. Um, having been injured at one time, um, I hadn't experienced having to go through handicap entrances and such, but when I was injured, I, I did, and I, I valued that because it made my access uh, easier. It allowed me to participate in things that other people take for granted. Uh, if you are in a position to provide that type of, of support, uh, I would wholly encourage it, uh, be it government, employer. Um, it, it, it's, the, it's the right thing to do, and it's, it's sound in principle uh, and one that I think is, is, is timely. All right. Well, we look forward to having you again sometime in the future if you're in Nigeria. I would <laughs> love to come Nigeria. back anytime. All right. Thank you so much, thank Johnny you. Banks. Johnny Banks is a board member and executive advisor, EH. Yes, which stands for Environment, Health and Safety, uh, Grace. Thank you so much for your time with us on the program. Thank you. All right, we'll take a break at this point. And when we come back, we shall talk some sports. Please stay with us. <laughs>